All right, back for part two, and I'm hoping this will be a, a short, short one. And again, you don't have to type down the answers. Hopefully, you got all the answers. Your tries, um, just guesses, and then we'll take them up. How many rows are there? Well, the rows go with the number of elements in the big array, not the inside array, the big array. So there's one, two, three, which remember are subscripts zero, one, and two. So how many rows are there? There's three rows from subscript zero to subscript two. How many columns? Now, this is actually a hard question because the first row really looks like it only has one column. The second one has four, and the third one has two. So how many columns are there? Well, we don't know. And in fact, this is something that's else's that's pretty cool about JavaScript is that our two-dimensional arrays can have different length rows. And we'll give the, a name to that later. Um, so question mark, question mark, maybe four, but we'll see that if we wanted to find the fourth element of the first row, it just wouldn't work. Um, so what is the value to, of stupid array one, two? Well, remember, our zero indexing, so this is rows, we want row one, row zero, row one. Okay, so we're in row one, and then column two, this is column zero, column one, column two. So what is the value of stupid array one, two? That's Jim. A uh, string in this case. So what's the value of stupid array two, one? Uh, row zero, row one, row two, and then column zero, column one. So row two, column one is by. What is the value of stupid array two? So, well, it's a two-dimensional array. Doesn't, doesn't it need two values? Well, not necessarily. We can refer to... Um, this would give us an entire row, row 0, row 1, row 2. It's going to give us this entire row, the array, hello, by. It's going to give us that whole thing. And in fact, um, if we wanted to uh, console.log that out, why not? I'm just going to copy that out in case you don't trust me and jam that into JS. I got a JS bin handy here. Let's go console.log console.log stupid array 2 and just see what that's going to look like. Um, run. Bam, there. See? And you didn't even believe me or nothing. Okay, well, let's keep going. What about what is the value of stupid array 0, 3? So remember, um, row 0, but there is no. There is no column three. So what happens when we try and print out or try and access an array value that doesn't exist? Well, it gives us a sort of a uh, almost like a error message. It just says it's undefined. So for instance, if I put in zero three here and then hit clear there and run, it would just say that's undefined. And so undefined. Now, if I were to actually assign that something, it, that would probably be okay to do that. Um, but it prints out undefined. So there we go. Um, and what's weird, and here's the word for it, it's called a jagged array when rows are not the same length. So our first row had one, our second row had four, our third row had two. Um, when they're not the same length, it's called a jagged array. Um, in most programming languages, this is prohibited. So in JavaScript, it's fine. All right, let's uh, keep going. Oh, I don't have a screen on this one. So arrays and loops. Uh, a little bit of review here. In ICS3C, we referred to the elements of an array by square brackets and used a loop, a for loop as a counter, like this. So if we had an array, and these are marks. Well, maybe not marks. Who knows what these are? These are um ages say doesn't matter um and we got uh, total what we're going to do is we're going to total up the values in this array remember a for loop and i'll give you the whole whole thing a for loop's got three parts it's got our counter initialized it's got a condition and notice the condition is as long as i is less than my array dot length which is i is less than four um then it's going to keep going remember in this i plus plus 
adds one to the value of i each time we go through the loop. So it's going to go through the loop. It's going to print out um, the value of the array to the console, and it's going to add up the total. Notice that the total is not printed out, but that's what's happening. So let me copy that. I'm going to... Oops, I didn't want to do that. Where did it go? Edit, undo. Edit, undo, undo. Edit, undo. Oh, there we go. Hopefully I can just copy that. Let's see if I can do that. Control, copy. Yeah, I must have pressed paste instead. Hopefully you never made that mistake. Anyway, back to JSBin. There we go. I'm going to actually console log the total as well. Why not? Just for funsies. Clear that. Run it. We'll see it print, uh, print console logs out to the screen, all the values of the array, and then, then the total at the end after the for loop was done. Dandy review. It was, and this was pretty complicated from grade 11, but we got through it not so bad. Um, no problem. So why am I bringing it up? Well, in the video, they see they show a pretty cool diff, little difference here. And instead of these three pieces, they have almost like an English way of of doing this. They just say var i, and i changes in my array. So in is a keyword, var is a keyword, and then it this loop will do exactly the same thing but it reads better it's it's easier to read so um, the only thing that's changed is this middle this uh, this for loop line so so uh, I'll show you that for I in my array so it's saying what this is doing is just looping through for each of the values in my array and then it's going to print it out clear that and I won't even be able, I can't even tell that anything's been changed, but which is easier now? Makes you wonder why we did it the other way first. Well, the other way was was probably, a, well, I'll give you two reasons. First of all, it works in other programming languages like Java. Um, and why would I do this now? It's because it's leading a, in, into the next topic, which is on objects. Okay, and we'll get to that, um, we'll get to that soon enough. Okay. Back to your note, finish off your note, save that up. I don't think I have anything else to say. Nope, nothing else to say. Save this note in your notes folder, and then there's some homework activities for you to try. Uh, remember the homework activities in these um, in this unit, you're going to collect them up and then hand them in to replace uh, a test in this unit. So you want to make sure you get the right amount of homework activities done. So save that up, and that's it.